Hello everyone, I am going to talk about logotherapy. Humanistic existential psychotherapy includes two approaches namely humanistic and existential. Practically these approaches are identified with each other. Humanistic psychotherapy is an approach that tries to do justice to the whole person and it includes mind, body and spirit. The totality of the human person is taken into account and not just how we think or how we behave. We can say that it embraces a wide range of therapeutic methods that recognize self healing capacities of the client. In the therapy relationship, the therapist and the client are seen as equals. It views human beings as basically good and positive with the freedom to choose all of their actions and behaviors in their lives. What seems to be motivating people's behavior is self actualization or the desire to become something more of oneself in the future. Every individual is fully responsible for the choices he makes to further or diminish his or her existence. Responsibility is the key ingredient of this approach and everyone is responsible for the choices he or she makes in his or her life and for the emotions, thoughts and behaviors he or she chooses to have. Whatever were a client's past experiences and the present ones, what matters ultimately is how he or she reacts to those experiences and how he or she feels. It considers individualism very sacred and seeks to work with the individual's strengths and weaknesses as they apply to his or her particular problems. Existential psychotherapy aims at enabling clients to find constructive ways of coming to terms with the challenges of everyday living. The focus definitely is on the client's concrete individual experience of anxiety and distress leading to an exploration of his or her personal beliefs and value system. In order to clarify and understand these in relation to the specific physical, psychological and socio-cultural context. What sets Frankel apart from other humanistic therapists is his unconditional affirmation of life's meaning. The main objective of logotherapy was to facilitate clients quest for meaning and empower them to live meaningfully, responsibly regardless of their life circumstances. At the end of my talk, you will be able to understand the development of logotherapy as a form of psychotherapy. Concepts in logotherapy such as the spiritual dimension, power of the human spirit and meaning in life just to name a few basic tenets of logotherapy and techniques of logotherapy. Let me tell you about the background of logotherapy. Frankel was using an existential approach even before he was a prisoner in the concentration camps. His experience in the camps only confirmed his therapeutic approach. His main contribution is the book Man's Search for Meaning in which he outlined the essentials of logotherapy. He is of the opinion that love is the highest goal to which all of us can aspire. His experience in the concentration camps confirmed his belief that we have choices in every situation. Even in the worst of situations, one can preserve a vestige of spiritual freedom and independence of mind. One of his basic beliefs is that the essence of being human lies in searching for meaning and purpose. It was Viktor Frankl's logotherapy that made popular the existential psychotherapy in Europe. The proponents of the humanistic existential therapy are mainly Viktor Frankl and Rollo May. In fact, there is no single founder of the existential approach because it has its roots in diverse movements. Although logotherapy and existential analysis tend to be used interchangeably or together as a single label, it may be helpful to recognize the following difference between these two terms. 
logotherapy refers to Dr. Frankel's spiritually oriented approach to psychotherapy. It is in fact a psychotherapy in spiritual terms. Existential analysis on the other hand refers to the analytical therapeutic process involved in addressing the patient's spiritual existential needs. In as much as logotherapy makes him aware of the hidden logos of his existence, it is an analytical process. Dr. Viktor Frankl of Vienna developed logotherapy and existential analysis in the 1930s because of his dissatisfaction with both Freud and Adler. Logotherapy is also known as the third Viennese school of psychotherapy. Frankl accepts Sigmund Freud's concept of unconsciousness, but considers the will to meaning as more fundamental than the will to pleasure. Existential analysis is designed to bring to consciousness the hidden meaning or spiritual dimension of the client. Frankl received training in individual psychology from Adler. Some of the basic concepts of logotherapy such as meaning, freedom and responsibility bear the imprint of Adler. A major difference between logotherapy and psychoanalysis is that both Freud and Adler focus on the past while logotherapy focuses rather on the future that is to say on the meanings to be fulfilled in the future. Logotherapy was put to a severe test in a very personal way between 1942 and 1945 when Frankl was committed to Nazi concentration camps. His experience and observation supported the main thesis of logotherapy. Frankl says that what he learned in three years spent in the concentration camps is that those most apt to survive the camps were those oriented towards the future, toward a meaning to be fulfilled by them in the future. There are no other psychotherapists whose life and work are as inseparable as Dr. Frankl's. He is logotherapy and vice versa. Let me tell you about the spiritual dimension. It is not possible to practice logotherapy without understanding the human spirit or the spiritual dimension of human existence. According to Frankl's dimensional ontology, human beings exist in three dimensions, somatic, mental and spiritual. Spirituality is the uniquely human dimension. However, these different dimensions must be understood in their totality because a person is a unity in complexity. Let me tell you about the defined power of the human spirit. One of the prepositions of logotherapy is that the human spirit is our healthy core. The human spirit may be blocked by biological or psychological sickness, but it will remain intact. The human spirit does not get sick even when the psychobiological organism is injured. Part of the human spirit is the unconscious. When it is blocked or repressed, one experiences existential vacuum or neurosis. Existential analysis seeks to remove the block and brings to consciousness the will to meaning. The noetic dimension or the human spirit is the medicine chest of logotherapy. It contains love, the will to meaning, purpose, creativity, conscience and the capacity for choice, responsibility and sense of humor. The defined power of the human spirit refers to the human capacity to tap into the spiritual part of the self and rise above the negative effects of situations, illness or the past. It may be more helpful for scientific and therapeutic purposes to conceptualize the human spirit as inner resources which can come into one's aid in coping with life stress. We will now see the relation between logotherapy and religion. Frankl differentiates between spirit, spirituality and religion. 
spirit refers to one of the dimensions of humanity. Spirituality is manifest in a person's quest for meaning. Religion encompasses the ultimate meaning, super meaning as well as God. Frankel clearly recognizes the importance of religion but is reluctant to be considered religious. He equates authentic religion with deep spirituality. Let me tell you about the meaning of logotherapy. The Greek word logos represents the word, the will of God, the controlling principles of the universe or meaning. Frankl translates logos as meaning. Therefore, logotherapy means healing and health through meaning. According to Frankl, there are two levels of meaning, the present meaning or the meaning of the moment and the ultimate meaning or super meaning. Frankl believes that it is more productive to address specific meaning of the moment of the situation rather than talking about meaning of life in general, because ultimate meanings exist in the suprahuman dimension which is hidden from us. The cautions against addressing ultimate meanings in therapy unless the client is openly religious. Each individual must discover the specific meanings of the moment. Only the individual knows the right meaning specific to the moment. The therapist can also facilitate the quest and guide the client to those areas in which meanings can be found. Let me tell you about the basic tenets in logotherapy. The logotherapeutic credo consists of freedom of will, the will to meaning and the meaning of life. These are the cornerstones of logotherapy. Frankl realizes that human freedom is finite freedom. Man is not free from conditions, but he is free to take a stand in regard to them. The conditions do not completely condition him. Although our existence is influenced by instincts, inherited disposition and environment, an area of freedom is always available to us. Everything can be taken from a man except his freedom that is to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances to choose one's own way. Therefore, we always have the freedom to take a stand towards the restrictive conditions and transcend our fate. Freedom of will is possible because of the human capacity for self-distancing or self-detachment. By virtue of this capacity, man is capable of detaching himself not only from a situation but also from himself. He is capable of choosing his attitude towards himself. With freedom comes responsibility. Responsibility without freedom is tyranny and freedom without responsibility leads to anarchy which can lead to boredom, anxiety and neurosis. We are responsible not only to something but also to someone, not only to the task but also to the task master. Frankl differentiates between responsibility and responsibleness. The former comes from possessing the freedom of will, the latter refers to exercising a freedom to make the right decisions in meeting the demands of each situation. Existential analysis aims at nothing more and nothing less than leading men to consciousness of their responsibility. Let me tell you about the will to meaning. The will to meaning is the basic striving of man to find meaning and purpose. The will to meaning is possible because of the human capacity to transcend one's immediate circumstances. Being human is being always directed and pointing to something or someone rather than oneself, to a meaning to fulfill a cause to serve or to another human being to encounter and to love. Self transcendence often makes use of the power of imagination and optimism. Self transcendence is essential for finding happiness which is not the end but the byproduct of trying to forget oneself. 
only to the extent to which man fulfills a meaning out there in the world does he fulfill himself. Every meaning is unique to each person and each one has to discover the meaning of each particular situation for himself or herself. The therapist can only challenge and guide the patient to potential areas of meaning, creative, experiential and attitudinal values. According to logotherapy, we can discover this meaning in life in three different ways, by creating a work or doing a deed, by experiencing something or encountering someone and by the attitude we take towards unavoidable suffering. Let me tell you about the suffering and tragic triad. Suffering is not a necessary condition for meaning but it tends to trigger the quest for meaning. Frankl observed that people are willing to endure any suffering if they are convinced that this suffering has meaning. However, meaningless suffering leads to despair. Logotherapists do not ask for the reason for suffering but guide their clients towards the realization of concrete meanings and choose the right attitudes. Often, Logotherapists appeal to their clients to take a heroic stand towards suffering by suggesting that unavoidable suffering gives them the opportunity to bear witness to the human potential and dignity. Search for meaning is more likely to be occasioned by three negative facets of human existence, pain, guilt and death. Pain refers to the suffering guilt to the awareness of our fallibility and death to our awareness of the transitory nature of life. These negative experiences make us more aware of our needs for meaning and spiritual aspiration. Neuroses are more likely to originate from our attempt to obscure the reality of pain, guilt and death as existential facts. Logotherapy provides an answer to the tragic triad through attitudinal values and tragic optimism. I will now discuss the logotherapeutic techniques. Nugenic neurosis is regarded as the collective neurosis of our society. The goal of logotherapy is to enable patients to discover their unique meanings and consider their own areas of freedom. In cases of psychogenic and individual neurosis which may be treated by traditional psychotherapy or medication, logotherapy serves as a supplement and helps break the vicious circles of neurosis. The four main logotherapy techniques are paradoxical intention, de-reflection, modification of attitudes and appealing techniques. anticipatory anxiety which in turn brings about what the patient fears to happen. Thus, fear of fear creates a vicious circle. The most common reaction to fear of fear is flight from fear and the phobic pattern is maintained by excessive avoidance. This vicious circle is broken when the fear is replaced by a paradoxical wish. As a result, the patient no longer avoids situations that create anxiety. With a phobic patient, paradoxical intention typically begins with self-detachment 
often after invitation and persuasion. The second step is to ask the patient to develop a new attitude of not fearing but welcoming the symptoms. This typically results in a reduction of symptom which allows the therapist to work towards enhancing meaningful living. In the case of obsessive compulsive disorder, the patient fights against obsessions or compulsions. However, the more he fights against the symptoms, the stronger they become. Again, a vicious circle is created. To break this vicious circle, the patient with a compulsive hand washing because of fear of infection would be told to tell himself or herself, I can't get enough bacteria, I want to become as dirty as possible. Paradoxical intention has been used with increasing frequency with good results, especially in treating clients who suffer from phobias and obsessive compulsive disorder. Frankel developed dereflection to contract hyperintention that is trying too hard and hyperreflection that is thinking too hard. Examples of hyperintention include trying very hard to fall asleep, excessively pursuing pleasure, happiness or power. Addiction is a form of hyperintention. Hyperreflection involves excessively monitoring one's own performance and becoming very anxious about failure. Hyperreflection may turn everyday minor problems into catastrophes and small obstacles into insurmountable hurdles. This technique is built upon the human capacity for self distancing and self transcendence. Clients are asked to redirect their attention away from their problems to more positive aspects of their lives. For example, instead of worrying about not being able to fall asleep, the client is asked to use the time to read a book or watch television. Typically, the first step is to help clients to put some distance between themselves and their symptoms. Then, they are invited to use their defined power of the human spirit to transcend their present conditions and move towards positive activities. This will result in a reduction of the symptom. By immersing ourselves in work or by choosing the right attitude, we can transcend not only external conditions but also ourselves. The goal of dereflection is to help clients transcend themselves and move towards creative and experiential values. The modification of attitudes is used for noogenic neurosis depression and addiction by promoting the will to meaning. It can also be used in coping with suffering related to circumstances, fate or illness. Generally, the emphasis is on reframing attitudes from negative to positive. The next tenet is Socratic dialogue. In this, the therapist facilitates the client's discovery of meaning freedom and responsibility by challenging and questioning. The dialogue may begin with a struggle between a client and a therapist, but should never become negative. Let me sum up. The connections between the terms existentialism and humanism are confusing due to the historical connection and because the representatives of existentialistic thinking and humanistic thinking did not clearly demarcate their territory. Though these two approaches have much in common like respect for the client's subjective experience and a trust in the capacity of the client to make constructive conscious choices, emphasis on freedom, choice, values, personal responsibility, autonomy, purpose and meaning, there are significant philosophical differences between them. The existentialists say that we are faced with the anxiety of choosing to create an identity in a world that lacks intrinsic meaning. It was Frankel's logotherapy that made popular the existential psychotherapy in Europe. 
Frankel is the founder of logotherapy which was called the third Viennese school of psychotherapy after Freud's psychoanalysis and Adler's individual psychology. Logotherapy finds its philosophical roots in existentialism and phenomenology. Its psychological roots are in psychoanalysis and individual psychology and its spiritual roots are in the profound commitment to the human being as an irreducibly spiritual creature. Frankel's experience in Nazi camps was recorded in his book titled Man's Search for Meaning. His personal triumph over unimaginable trauma has been the most compelling testimony to logotherapy. The most important goal of logotherapy is to facilitate clients search for meaning and allow them to live meaningfully and responsibly despite their life situation. The cornerstones of logotherapy are freedom of will, will to meaning and the meaning of life also known as the logotherapeutic credo. The four main techniques used in logotherapy are paradoxical intention, de reflection, modification of attitudes and appealing techniques. Let me sign off now and hope to meet you in another session. Thank you.